Dr. Stone, episode two is finally here. Man, I freaking love this series. I love this series. This is just such a fantastic watch on a Friday. So, let's get right into it. Tsukasa, a new character introduced. It was very apparent from the way this episode was handling his character introduction that there was more behind the scenes like there was more than meets the eye that there was definitely something off about Tsukasa because it just seemed too good to be true for a character like him to be introduced I mean he comes out of nowhere like he's in like he was introduced technically in the first episode because Taiju he talked about him but when he finally is freed from petrification he comes out of the stone and punches a lion which is just it's ridiculous, okay? I, I, I truly doubt a normal person would legitimately go and punch a lion. Like, that's just not something you're going to see. Because most of the time, if someone tries to do that, they're going to probably be dead. So, just seeing a character being introduced like that kind of lets us know that you don't mess with this guy. You mess with this guy, you're going to get messed up. That's pretty much what that scene was trying to imply to us as the viewer. But, the way the scene was, like explaining like the background of the character the way Sinju was talking about him he's basically like you know it would be bad if we the first person we waked up for a part of civilization was a murderer and it's clear as day that you know that was foreshadowing for the finale of episode two because he ends up destroying a stone statue which is effectively murder so they awoke up, like they woke up a murderer but on top of that they have an individual that is pretty much invincible in this era. Because Sinju even talks about it himself. Without weapons, without, like, guns, etc., you know, there is just no way that they could fight someone of his caliber. Because he is that strong. If the man could go out of his way and punch a lion and be completely fine and hunt like he does, then Sinju and Taiju, they won't be able to fight someone like that that's able to do that type of level of strength of hunting and punching a lion, it just, it's not possible. So, yeah, it, it was very apparent from the way the episode was depicting Tsukasa that he would definitely turn out to be an issue. And that's exactly what is happening. The question is, how do they stop him? Now, thankfully, Sinju, he has a lot of cards he can play. And let me explain. When you really think about the situation at hand right now, Sinju is probably the most important person in the entire world right now. Like, from all we know, there's only three people that's unpetrified. Unless there's a whole other civilization that's been ongoing for a while that managed to get saved from the petrification, or they were freed somehow. But the point is, if we're just looking at our three characters that's been introduced that have been freed, Sinju is effectively the most important person. Because he is someone that has a good brain on him that is able to jumpstart civilization, but also free more people from stone. So obviously, getting rid of him would basically mean that you end humanity itself. Nobody will ever walk the earth again. Senju will be the last known person to be able to free people unless somehow Taiju and Tsukasa is able to figure something out, which I doubt. You know, Taiju, he's a lost cause, and Tsukasa, he might be intelligent, but I highly doubt he's on the level of Sinju to break people out of stone. So when you really think about it, there is no way Tsukasa, unless he's an idiot, he would take down Sinju. So he does have a card to play because of that. He has protection because of his knowledge. But the thing is, though, it doesn't change the fact that he could easily somehow get the information out of Senju about how to free people from the stone. If he gets that, then obviously Senju is no longer important anymore. He could just be thrown away because that's all he really does need. And it's even more apparent, though, that Senju can't really fight back. I mean, that was the whole point of Taiju being freed from the stone is because... Taiju is someone that's a heavy lifter, he's someone that's able to do physical stuff, while Sinju was able to just use his brain to create things, and obviously Tsukasa, he was introduced to be able to fight creatures and hunt, so they have their own roles to play, and like I said, Sinju, he can't really fight, so going up against someone like Tsukasa, 
he'll get destroyed. So, like I said, the only defense he has is his knowledge and what he knows, but even then, it really depends on how good his mind is. Like, is he able to withstand torture? If Sukas is an individual that's willing to re resort to something like that, then will Sinju be able to deal with it? I mean, if I had to really say, I would think he would be able to, and the reason why I say that is because we got to think about how he got freed from the stone in the first place. He as an individual freed from the stone because he was able to keep his consciousness for 3,700 years. He was counting for that long. And anyone to be able to do something like that has to have an iron will, but also be kind of crazy, like really crazy, because no normal individual, I don't care how smart you are or whatever, no normal person is probably going to be able to withstand that long of a time just counting. Because the human attention span, I just doubt you could do it. I, I just doubt people could. I mean, you would turn up to be just like Cars from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. You, you turn out to just be like him. Because there's just no way that you would be able to count that long. Unless you're just not right in the head. And so, it's clear as day that Sinju isn't, and Taiju as well in a way. So, yeah. I don't think normal methods of torture would probably work on him. So, it'd probably be hard to get information out of Sinju. Unless, you know, he gets to send you through Taiju. That, that's the only way I could see maybe the knowledge being gained if he somehow tries to hurt Taiju and Sinju spills the beans. So, um, anyways, let's, um, let's talk about Tsukasa as a character. So, besides him being obviously an antagonist and kind of like a villain right now, probably the first major conflict of the story, as a character, his design, he's really cool looking. I love his character design. I love just the way his voice actor is. And I especially just love the way the marks look on his face. You know, the like cracks on his face that when people free from the stone. I love the way that looks. Now, I hope I'm not the only one, but when I saw him kind of break out of the stone, I kind of got the, uh, the impression of Awaken My Masters from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. If you watched No JoJo Part too, then you know the whole meme where Awaken My Masters and I I I I can't sing it, but you, you know what I'm saying like that theme song starts playing and you just see the pillar men start like posing and stuff, that's what I was reminded of when you see the character kind of like wake up because he reminded me a lot of Cars' design too, like he really does look like Cars, I wonder if uh, the artist of Dr. Stone actually, you know was inspired by maybe Jojo in some way because of just the way Cars looked when he broke out as a Pillarman. But anyways, um, other things to get into. Let's see here. Um, we also have the whole situation with the clams. So apparently, you have Sinju say that there's four things they can use from crushing up clams. But then he turns around and says there was only three. And he corrected Taiju. Which, it's very apparent that he was withholding information from Tsukasa because he didn't really trust him to begin with. It was very clear. So, the question is, what could the fourth thing be? Now, personally, I have no freaking idea because I'm really not a scientist. I don't know that well about what type of chemical makeup is inside of, like, a shells and stuff and what you could really turn it into that would be very important. I could be, you know, off or wrong, but it might have something to do with weapons because he was creating, like, some form of makeshift primitive bow slash crossbow in the middle of the episode that he was hiding, so that might be what it's used for, maybe some form of bomb or something, but we don't really know. So, I do think that this series is about to get very intense because, like I said, we got conflict now, and we also have it to where someone that's been awakened that is definitely an enemy. And the question comes down to now, will, um, will he be able to get the knowledge of freeing people from the stone from Senju? And we got to also talk about his motive as well, actually. I think that's something very important. Sukasa's motive is something that I think many might kind of understand, in a sense. He is someone that thinks that reawakening everyone would necessarily be a bad thing. And the way you could kind of interpret his motive is that the way the old world worked was really bad. There was a lot of corruption, and honestly, he is not wrong. When you think about our world, it is okay. It's better than it has been probably in all of history. I mean, we have world peace right now. It's not completely peaceful, but we kind of do thanks to certain events that's happened in our history of World War II and World War I. But regardless, though, it, 
it isn't perfect. There is definitely some corruption all throughout our world. And what he basically says is, is that because of how the world was run before the stonification or petrification of everyone, you know, you had it to where people owned land, they were very rude, they didn't care about anyone or whatever. You had it to where you had these politicians not care, throw people under the bus. There was just a lot of things that was just poorly done, and it wasn't perfect. And he wants to kind of correct it to where the world will not go back to what it once was. He wants to make it to where the world is truly reset. And when you really think about what happened, technically the world kind of got rid of a problem, which was humanity itself. And getting rid of humanity allowed the world to obviously become what it once was. You know, back to the wild, get back to nature. And we see how the whole you know, sight of, you know, civilization, humanity is pretty much gone at this point. And he kind of wants to keep it like that. He wants to keep it to where humanity hasn't really ruined nature itself or ruined the world. He wants to keep it pure and natural, which I think at the end of the day, I can understand his motive, but at the same time, it's not something that is the right thing to do. Because what Sinju's trying to do is, is just put the world back to what it was. He doesn't want to play God. He just wants to be able to fix everything and put it back the way it was. Which I can respect that, because even if he has the power, it doesn't mean he should do it. That, I think, is a fundamental thing that people should understand. Just because you have a power to do something doesn't mean you should do it, and he is not trying to step into that realm, but obviously Sukasa wants to. But I think that's about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that, Chibi out.